Torquay on Victoria's rugged coast has seen many a ding-dong battle. Oh, hits it hard off the top of that left. <laughs> Rick Dell, Bells Beach Pro Champion. Bells Beach, not far from Torquay, has some of the world's most challenging surf. A fact celebrated in celluloid. Just let me go out there, let me get one wave before you take me. One wave. But these treacherous conditions require experience. You really need to be a proficient swimmer to be able to be a uh, proficient surfer. Until that pool opens, I'll be pushing very hard. An Olympic-sized swimming pool's planned for Torquay. $20 million for a brand new Surf Coast Aquatic Centre. This will be delivered, no ifs, no buts. Oh! In last year's federal election, Liberal Sarah Henderson was fighting for her political life in the perennially marginal seat of Kerangamite. But why the Torquay pool and a dozen other pools in coalition seats... Hi, I'm Christian Porter. ..should have been funded in the first place is still in question. The principal objective of that is to ensure that there are changing facilities and other facilities to support more girls and women's participation in sport. A $150 million grant program to fund women's change rooms and water safety. We've got young women getting changed in cars, we've got people getting changed behind towels. It sounded like a boon for community sport and sporting organisations across the country set about dusting off their priority lists. One day before Scott Morrison called the election on April 11, an executive from one of the nation's major sporting codes sent an email to the Prime Minister's office, Senator Mackenzie's office and the office of Deputy Prime Minister Michael McCormack. Please see attached a spreadsheet of priority projects that may be deemed eligible for funding under the Female Change Room Fund. The Deputy Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Damien Callaghor, was first to respond. Appreciate the list. Very helpful and comprehensive. The government will be establishing guidelines for this program in due course, so we'll be in touch following the election with more details. Thanks for this info, Damien. Is the intention, therefore, that the fund won't be utilised pre-election? A program of this nature and size needs appropriate guidelines, governance and other matters lined up before we can open it to industry to apply for funding. Cheers, Damien. The very next day, the Prime Minister announced Parliament would be dissolved. And just three days later, News Torquay would get its pull, broke in the Geelong Advertiser, surprising even the Council. The email discloses two things. One is that the government was aware that it required governance. That was breached. The other thing is that the email shows that the allocation shouldn't have been made because it could possibly interfere with the election process. That was breached. Well, we don't care where the money comes from. Build it and we will swim. The ABC understands that the sports executive who was told there'd be no grants before guidelines were in place was from Cricket Australia, though the organisation would not confirm this when approached by 7.30. Back in March, we approached Michael McCormack with some questions about the scheme. Right, Mr McCormack, can you confirm that major sporting codes contacted your office before the election last year inquiring about the guidelines that would be behind this funding? Well, well major sporting organisations always inquire about uh, guidelines, but indeed uh, any of these guidelines are always publicly available. Your, your Chief of Staff, Damien Callagher. Callahor. Callahor. Uh, told major sporting codes that guidelines would be coming, that they would be coming, in, according to the incoming brief, in fact, that they'd be coming in June last year. There are no guidelines, still aren't any but, but indeed, that's not just a... That, that wasn't just a program uh, for prior to the election or just after the election. That's a program that we're rolling out continuously. And uh, as with... as spent, with and, 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 well, not all the money has been spent, just like with the sports grants. Today, Mr McCormack's office said the government was simply delivering election promises and that Labor had made similar pledges. The majority of the Female Facilities Fund was allocated during the election campaign. The lion's share, some $120 million, went towards 14 swimming pools all in 11 must-hold coalition seats. Just $12 million was spent on change rooms, mostly in Liberal or national-held seats. 
The government has never released any guidelines for the program, nor have sports organisations been invited to apply for what's left in the kitty. Proper process, obviously, puts the guidelines in place before the money is allocated. Today, a parliamentary inquiry heard the infrastructure department is no longer responsible for the fund. Uh, no, Senator, we actually didn't commence work in developing the guidelines before the program was transferred to health. The inquiry's also been looking into that other sports grants program, the one that cost Senator Mackenzie her ministerial career, where grants were infamously guided by a colour-coded spreadsheet denoting political party. The nation's top public servant and Scott Morrison's former chief of staff quizzed over his review of the then sports minister's conduct. I was asked to inquire about the minister's apparent breaches of the ministerial standards. I did that, she resigned. The government just can't manipulate public money so that they can pour it into marginal electorates. It perverts the election process. What we need is a federal anti-corruption body which can investigate this, explain what has gone wrong and possibly do something about it to prevent it occurring again. The sports wrought scandal that dominated politics at the start of the year might seem long ago. But in a pandemic-induced recession, money will be tighter than ever. The public should expect the strongest of standards and accountability. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.